Good morning. Good, Good to see that there's plenty of people here. Still got some empty seats. If you're wondering where Cantor and the Scola are, they're over at Pilgrim this morning uh, singing their hearts out. They had uh, Scola uh, the, the week, the camp all week. So that's where, uh, that's where some of those are. If you're wondering where they are, well, they're over there singing in Pilgrim because of the renovations. They, they didn't think they'd fit everybody in, um, in this space um, up in, uh, right here. So that's why they're there. Uh, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. our help is in the name of the Lord. We may come and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me. A sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament reading is from the book of 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. He asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take, my, wait, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And Elijah arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. The people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by. The great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. The people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. 
the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shaphat, to Abel Mehalah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your praise. The one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. The one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah put to death. And I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him, and took the yoke of oxen, and sacrificed them, and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they ate. And he arose and went after Elijah, and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. And as for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my God. You hold my life. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel, and the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to shale, or let your holy one see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle text is from St. Peter's first letter, the third chapter. Finally, all of you, have unity of mind, Sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, or on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. For the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, regard Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Your brothers and sisters in Christ, in our epistle lesson today, we are encouraged to be zealous. Zealous. Elijah also uses that term, although it's uh, translated as jealous twice in your Old Testament reading. Uh, that word also can be uh, in correctly interpreted, zealous. Peter, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, even asked a rhetorical question in regard to our zeal. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? The insinuation is that no one can bring you lasting harm if you have zeal for the Lord and His good ways. We have such zeal when God reigns in our hearts and in our minds. God gives us the gift of faith, intending that our faith will continue to grow into a zealous fervor in which we are willing to leave all else and follow the Lord, even to the ends of the earth. God gives us faith, intending it to grow like a mustard seed so it becomes big and overshadows all else in our lives so that we have zeal for the Lord and His kingdom, even in the face of danger. Such a zealous trust, which moves us to boldly abandon our earthly complacency, is indicative of true faith by which we are saved. How do we get such faith? How do we get such necessary zeal? It is a gift from God. Such zealous faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. We hear about the peace that Jesus won for us on the cross, and we naturally begin to seek after that peace and pursue it. Peter first quotes Psalm 34, in which we are told that if anyone wants to see some good, let him seek peace and pursue it not just to refrain from being cantankerous or antagonistic, but to seek after peace and actively chase after it. We are to pursue peace and go after it like, well, like someone walking through a hot desert, resolutely seeking water and shade. We are to be so focused in our efforts to have peace with God and peace with man that we zealously and tenaciously pursue peace. We are to pursue peace like a dedicated peace officer who, who risks his own life in a high-speed pursuit to apprehend a criminal and restore peace to his community. St. Peter writes, Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Peter's referring to a radical kind of discipleship that is the opposite of a casual or complacent relationship with the Lord. He's speaking, as the Scriptures often do, of a zealous faith. He's speaking of a willingness to risk life itself and the confidence of God's radical and His profound love for each and every one of us. The Apostle Paul also wrote of such a zealous faith. He wrote, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Even if we die and are martyred for the faith, we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loves us. No one can do us lasting harm if we have a zealous faith that compels us to seek that which is good. Even if we are killed for the faith, we have the victory in the resurrection. That's why Peter rhetorically asked us in our second reading today, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Because we are Christians, we seek peace and we pursue it. Not just in our own lives, but we chase after peace and try to apprehend it for the unbelievers as well. Because we are sinners living in a sinful world, peace will not just naturally come around eventually if we wait long enough. Because of sin, 
peace evades us. Peace must be intentionally and zealously sought after. In scriptures, it's repeatedly said, seek peace and pursue it. It must be pursued like a buck chases a doe in front of an 18-wheeler across the highway in, in hunting season. The pursuit of peace can be dangerous. And it can be a dangerous thing in this fallen world, as Elijah well found out. He had zeal, but his zeal led to him being in danger as he battled against the false prophets. The zealous pursuit of peace referred to in scriptures can result in persecution, yet we do it with confidence in the Lord's unending grace and His promise of eternal peace. This may seem like an impossible task, but our success in the pursuit of peace depends not upon the amount of effort that we put forth, but rather it depends on the Lord and His power, His grace. Success in our pursuit of peace confounds human reasoning. It may, not, it may not make sense to our limited human mind. It didn't make sense to Simon that if he let down his, let, his net just, just one more time, he would catch so many fish that his boat would start to sink. That didn't make sense to him even to put out the nets one more time at all. He had fished all night and caught nothing. He was a fisherman. He made his living by catching fish. He knew what he was doing. Jesus teaches Peter and us a lesson. Our success when fishing for men and pursuing peace is a gift from God. Our success is dependent upon the Lord and His blessing. But we're told to zealously pursue that which is good, namely peace. Peace, like faith, comes through hearing the gospel. The fruits of the Spirit, including peace and goodness, Come to us through the word and the sacraments which convey the gospel. All who repent and believe the gospel will have eternal peace. We are told, be ready. Be ready to give a defense for our hope in Christ so that more people can have that same lasting peace. We defend our faith and hope. We do so with gentleness and respect. Even when the unbelievers are hostile toward us, the gentle Spirit of Christ rules our hearts and we respond with kindness and gentleness. Though they disrespect us, we will not repay evil with evil. Instead, we treat them with gentleness and respect. And God will give us success. We trust in the Lord's miraculous ability to accomplish our pursuit of peace. This zealous pursuit of peace is ultimately something that the Lord affects in us. The peace we have, the peace that we pursue and apprehend is a fruit of the tree of the cross which only the Lord can give. Truly, the Lord provides peace. It is a fruit of the Spirit. In the end, it is His work, His zeal that ultimately apprehends that peace for us. We have peace by the blood of His cross. We have peace with God because Jesus has died for our sins and rose again for our justification. No matter what sins you have committed, the blood of Jesus cleanses your soul and you are forgiven. You have peace with God by the blood of His cross. You have peace with other people also because Jesus died to take away their sins too. We have this peace by virtue of His cross. Yet it is the Lord Himself who speaks to us through His Word today and encourages each and every one of us to seek that peace and pursue it. The Lord is not merely encouraging us to be engaged in a selfish pursuit. We seek peace for those around us as well. For Christ came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to who are near. God intends for the whole world to have peace. Christ came into the sinful, fallen world, as the angels told us, that there would be peace on earth and goodwill toward mankind. But there are still many who do not yet have this peace that only Christ can provide. 
So God graciously put zeal in your heart today so that you will boldly seek peace for your neighbors. Even though we live in a culture that is hostile to the truth of God's word, we can zealously and confidently seek peace by making a defense for our faith. We let down our nets in joyful confidence that with the Lord's blessing, our neighbors also will be captivated by, captivated by the Lord's peace. Ultimately, our zealous pursuit of peace will find success because Christ is zealous. He has exhibited great zeal, going to extreme lengths to secure our peace. He didn't even spare his own life, but gave it up for us all that we might have peace. Jesus was consumed with zeal for the Lord's house. Jesus has this radical and fervent, zealous devotion to the Lord that put him at odds with those folks who had no reverent fear of the Lord in his day. Wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak as he zealously and boldly spoke the truth, even when he knew it would lead to his death. He did so because his death and resurrection were meant to bring peace. And so they do. The peace of Christ continues to spread to the ends of the earth. As spoken by the prophet Isaiah, of the increase of his reign and of peace, there will be no end. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. May God grant us his zeal to the eternal benefit of our neighbors. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please rise for prayer if you're able. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God of hosts, prepare in us and in our daily vocations, always to make a defense to anyone who asks us for the reason of hope of Christ that is in us. Help us to zealously do this with gentleness and respect. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God of hosts, bless all who suffer for righteousness' sake, and keep them in Christ from fearing or being troubled by those who persecute them. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Lord, Please bless the work of missionaries everywhere as your servants across the world let down their nets of the gospel. We ask for your particular blessing upon Reverend Sean Trump and his work in Africa, Reverend Micah Wildauer and his work in Belize. Bless also our mission work here in our neighborhood and in our school. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God Almighty. Give wisdom and integrity to those serving in positions of authority within our government. Bless the work of emergency personnel and members of our armed forces that we may all live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are homebound, especially Laura, Karen, Marie, Joyce, and Lisa Lot. Give them comfort and the knowledge that they are not alone but that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Linda, David, Holly, Miriam, Aaron, Joanne, Karen, John, Maria, William, Mary, Jen, Vivian, Janelda, Megan, John, Marge, Willie, Carrie, Jim, Bob, Joseph, James, and Brad. Also those who are in hospice, especially Lorraine. Bless them all with strength and faith in their times of need. Bless the work of medical professionals. They may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O teacher of all that is pure and right, 
Grant those who have taught in our school a time to rest and rejuvenate over the summer. Bless our teachers and their families with enjoyable vacations. Bless our preparations for the coming school year. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh, Lord God, look with compassion upon all those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment, or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. See, try. 